Okay, welcome everyone to our session with Polygon ID. My name is Lamari and I'm the Senior Director of Community Engagement at the Decentralized Identity Foundation. If you're joining us today, you are aware that we have an ongoing hackathon between now and December 1st. So there is still time to form a team, also to get up to speed with some of the tooling in order to make a submission. And we encourage everyone to make a submission no matter how new or how advanced you are to decentralized identity. Um, so today we are joined by a couple of the members of the team at Polygon ID who are gonna give you an overview of Polygon ID and also take you through some of their tooling. Um, so I do also encourage people if you haven't yet to please register for the hackathon so you can get all the updates and even if you're not sure if you're going to submit, definitely um, register and get to know some of the people in the community. I'll be dropping uh, that link in the chat as well as the link to the Discord server. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to the team at Polygon ID to introduce themselves and give you an overview of uh, their platform. So go ahead, guys. Thanks so much, Lamari. I appreciate it. Um... Yeah, I'm happy to be here today to share some details around Polygon ID and the challenge that we're uh, prepared for this uh, Div Hackathon. And my name is Sotomora, and I'm the America's uh, BD lead for Polygon ID. And uh, maybe my colleague Miros as well, he would like to introduce himself. Yeah, hello everyone and welcome to this session. Um, I'm Miros, I'm leading one of the engineering teams and um, we'll try to give you a few hints on on what we do and, and, and what we expect to be done. Perfect. So yeah, we'll go over some information around uh, Polygon ID and um, some of the basics. Um, and then we'll get into some specifics around the hackathon challenge that we presented. Um, so yeah, so um, you probably are familiar with the triangle of trust, right? Uh, the three actors, the issuer of credentials, the identity holder and the verifier. Um, and the main difference that we have in Polygon ID is that you don't directly present the credential data to the third party, the verifier, but you actually uh, present a set key proof derived from the credential data to the third party, right? So that is the main difference that's, that's there in, in our uh, DID method. And uh, perhaps we'll get into some details about that um, next. So, so yeah, you would have a verifiable credential. The credential uses a JSON-LD format. It could have information about you, about uh, maybe your date of birth, your residency, your credit score, other information. Um, you would interact with a third party uh, that is the verifier and the verifier would ask questions about the credential. So the questions could be in the form of, uh, show me that you're over 18, show me that you are a resident of this country, or show me that you are not a resident of this list of countries. Uh, it could also be a range type of question, like show me that your credit score is between a given range, between like 500 and 600. So those types of questions. Um, you can see in our documentation that we have a ZK query language that enables you to ask various questions about the credentials that the credential holder has. Uh, then in response to that question, the third party, uh, sorry, the credential holder generates a set key proof. And then the third party can then privately verify that the information is there. Uh, so effectively you're able to, you know, answer the question without having to present your credential data. And so that's the, the main feature that, that we have. Uh, there's a lot of details around how this happens, of course, uh, set key proofs, et cetera, we're not going to we're not going to go into the details of that, uh, but you're free to do so. Uh, and we're also happy to answer questions offline about that as well. Okay, so to pull it all together, I've, I'm going to show you a quick uh, demo video just to uh, showcase what that looks like. Okay, so the first step is setting up the wallet. So once you create your wallet, you can um, kind of scan this QR code to get started. Uh, so this is going to be the step where you're going to be issued some credentials. So this is like just like just connecting your MetaMask or your other wallet to the third party site where you're going to be issued your credentials. Uh, at this point, 
you would then um, maybe ask a set of questions about the third party, right? If this is a university giving out a credential, they would probably give you a test. Or, you know, if this is uh, maybe uh, somebody else giving you some information, they would check that you are indeed the correct person or pass some, you know, set of questions before they give you the credential, right? So once that has happened, you will then be able to proceed to add credentials to your wallet. So. In this case, you can see how we uh, can scan this QR code and you're being offered some credentials, right? So you're being offered a credential that says that you're a person, a uh, credential that you're a member of the DAO or a credential that this is your date of birth or your country of residence. So those credentials are then added to the person's device and you can accept that, right? I'm just gonna skip over that, it takes a few seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the credentials have been added and then you can see the credentials. They are like these purple cards that are in your uh, Polygon ID app. Some credentials uh, have details about your proof of personhood or, or the others. And you can see details about the credentials, right? Including when it was issued and the signature type and things of that nature. Okay. So yes, so that's the, that's the first step, obtaining the credentials. Now we're gonna go into the phase of actually leveraging the credentials and using them, right? So we're gonna go into a sample uh, DAO interface, which is like an online cooperative community. Uh, and we're gonna actually use these credentials in a specific example. So we're gonna go and connect the wallet just like we did in the previous step. You can see how the user can scan the QR code so this connects the Polygon ID wallet app to the third party. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're now gonna go into the proposal section of the DAO cooperative so that you can vote on a given proposal, right? And so before you can vote on any of these given proposals, the site is gonna ask you to show that you are eligible to vote. Right, so you're gonna scan this QR code and you're gonna be able to show that you're eligible to vote. So here's the question being asked. Uh, it's getting uh, a requirement that you generate a proof showing that you are a member of this DAO, right? So we're gonna use that credential that we got in the first step to generate this ZK proof. So we go ahead and generate the cryptographic proof. And this is uh, taking place in the mobile device again. Uh, takes a few seconds. Uh, actually, this is like a year old demo, so this is much faster now. Um, so as soon as that's done. Yes, so proof generated, and then you're able to vote successfully in a DAO. So that's like the end-to-end -end flow, just to give you like a quick demo of what like the Polygon ID flow is like, right? So you saw that uh, from end-to-end. Um, okay, so yeah, some more features around Polygon ID. Uh, like we said, it uses ZK technology. It has this ZK query language that enables you to ask questions about the credentials. It is uh, fully open source and decentralized. It's its own DIT method that we registered under the W3C and, uh, and so on, right? So we also have uh, the ability to verify the proofs from the credentials, either off-chain or on-chain. So the proofs derived from the credentials, you could take the proof, check that the data has not been revoked via the on-chain verification that the credential has not been revoked, and you can take some action locally. Or you can feed this proof into a smart contract and then maybe take some action, like give uh, you know that person an airdrop or an access to a given platform, right? Um, so yeah, this is this is a um, an option that you have to do either one. And then as much as I like ZK proofs, and I think uh, privacy is important, in some cases you need the specific data to be revealed to the third party. So for cases like that, we enable something called selective disclosure. And currently you are able to pick a field from a given credential and reveal that, that field uh, to the third party, right? So that is also an option that you have. We also have uh, some technology that is coming up later where you can do link proof so you can actually reveal multiple fields from a given credential. Okay, so putting it all together, what does this look like um, from the credential side, right? So just 
you know, you have the JSON ID credentials. Uh, before you issue any credentials, the issuer needs to register themselves, register their DID on chain, and register their issuer state on chain. After you do that, you can issue credentials without spending any gas or generating any, any on-chain transaction costs uh, by signing the credential with your DID. And the credentials have the form of this JSON LD file, uh, which then as you interact with the third party and you ask questions, you generate uh, the proofs, which are packed in a form of a modified JSON web token, which we call the JSON web zero knowledge. And so that's how we kind of present these proofs to the third party. So yes, uh, I see from Luca, we have a question. Does the QR contain a challenge from the verifier? And then in the mobile application, the holder compute the presentation. Uh, I mean, I guess, yes, in a sense, maybe. I don't know, Miros wants to jump in here, but um, I guess it's just asking the third party to here, show this, show me this uh, from this given field that you can generate a set key proof that satisfies this question, right? So yeah. that would be the, right? So it is a form of a challenge. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So moving on, um, we have an ecosystem here, right? Um, so we have a variety of credential issuers that you can use in the hackathon. Some of them are free and Midos will talk about some of those in a little bit later, but you know, you don't have to issue your own credentials. Feel free to leverage the issuers in our ecosystem. Uh, also around the Polygon ID wallet, we have a Polygon ID wallet app that we provide and that you can use, but you can either use any of the wallets that we have in our ecosystem that have already integrated Polygon ID, or in addition, you can just use the SDKs that we provide either in Flutter or in JavaScript to develop your own Polygon ID compatible wallet, right? So you can use that as well uh, just for uh, input during the hackathon. Okay. And uh, finally, um, I will just mention that the marketplace uh, that we have, um, we'll show you the links to that um, in the presentation and they're also available in the Notion site. We have a set of issuers that issue free credentials. So for instance, you could use the free proof of life credential from Synapse and that would be showing you that you're a person that you scan your face and you are, you know, a, there's some assurance that you're a human. Uh, there's the Steam ID credentials from Gamer31, which have some information about the Steam account that the user has, such as their XP points or games that they played. Um, there's also some credentials from Click that are, you know, how many followers you have on Twitter or, you know, some gaming related credentials. So you can feel free to leverage these credentials in your use case. And um, the marketplace actually, I'll just quickly show that here. We have the marketplace where you can kind of navigate around the various credentials issuers. You can see the categories here. And if you want to filter on the free credentials, you can see here, and then you can see more details around any of these credentials. So feel free to try any of these, or you can issue your own, you know, up to you of how you want to do this, right? Uh, okay, so going back to the presentation, I'll let Miros uh, jump in here to talk about our components. Thanks, Otto, um, for for introducing everything. I'm just gonna try to jump more into into details, and then of course we can have a conversation with everyone. So, um, what do we offer that you can use? Right, um, as as Otto mentioned, there are three different, let's say, uh, parties involved. So, starting from the wallets. Um, there is the, the mobile app that is already available in, in iOS and Android uh, stores, respectively, which you can use, right? Uh, there is also, as Otto mentioned, there are few partners that have also integrated our tech in their own wallets that you can also use. Or um, if you are up to that, right, you can use the SDK and... Uh, embed it in whatever whatever you are building, right? So there is the mobile SDK written in Flutter and there is a JavaScript uh, SDK. The JavaScript SDK also is, um, let's say, um, Swiss Army knife, right? Because it, it gives you different opportunities for the, um, uh, you can do an issuer from there as well. Right now you can see everything in the docs. 
So that's that's for the wallet part, right? Then for the issuers, um, the issuer node is, as it says, is the, the server that enables issuers to issue credentials, revoke, update, and, and manage keys, right? So we have the issuer node available in the repo. Um, this is also available in the Google Marketplace. Uh, you can take it from there. You can um, take it from the repo itself, or you can use the JS SDK, which provides also the same capabilities, right? To to issue and revoke credentials. There is um, we'll provide that everything is in the docs, right? As always, um, there is a tutorial, right? There, uh, everything is is open source in the GitHub. And also, what is important to say on the issuer side. Auto mentioned the marketplace, right? This is a tool that we have just released, right? It was like yesterday or, or the day before. And it is a marketplace of credentials, uh, where of course there are credentials that, that are being that you need to pay for, but there are some that are free, which you can use. But also you can build your own. So you can use a schema builder, which is the tool that we provide uh, to build your own schema and then use it. Uh, to issue it from the from the from the issuer node, right, or, or from the JS SDK, and the tool is also there. So um, it's I would recommend to everyone at least to play with it, so you understand how actually the credential and the schema for a credential is looks like and how is it built. It will help you mostly on the verification side, right? Where it, this is something where we want to put a lot of weight on the verifier side. And then on the, yeah, um, show it, please. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so you, there are some schemas that you can already use, but you can build your own, right? This is the important part, what Otto is showing now, right? The, the credential, the schema of the credential and then the the schema URL and the JSON LD context. This is something that you will use in the in the on the verification side. Okay, um, let's go back to the presentation. Then, the last but definitely not the least is the verifier, um, which we have Go and JS version of that. There's also uh, the templates for the smart contract because. The very powerful feature that we have is the on-chain verification, right? So you can directly use the smart contract as a verifier and then just interact with it, right? There is also an off-chain um, version of the proof validation, uh, which you can use with the, with, with the libraries that we provide. And there's also an additional tool called Query Builder, which can help you build a query. And the query is something that is actually served to the wallet to actually do the, the to create the proof right and send it back and the query builder is um you serve it as it shows here you serve it the url to the json ld context of the schema right and then select uh, the schema type you just can play a bit with it and at the end it just returns you the the query that you need to serve right it's a super useful tool Quite simple still. We are going to enhance this in, in in the future. Well, in the next release, but it's good enough, right? For 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 what you need, right? To do a, a sort of a POC. And um, that's it, more or less, on the tools. Let's move to the next one. A quick question: What's the gas cost for proof verification? Uh, well, Sasha, maybe you can. Help us on on the on the cost. I don't remember what was the last one. I think we had that in the dev docs. Let me just pull that. I should. There was some. I think it was. Yeah. And and when we say proof, it's just a it's a it's a zkp where you, that verifies the signature, right? And the schema. Yes. Yes. So yeah, okay. it says uh, calling this function is a protein. Yeah, what I yes. figured. Okay, this yeah, sorry, this is the on-chain like uh, update when you issue a credential, but the verification as as uh, Alexander is saying, that just the verification of a proof is is less. It's like six hundred k. Yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now that that makes that makes that is that makes sense. Yeah. That that I would say is directionally uh, correct. Probably depends on the size of the of the um uh um and the number of the of the Merkle branches that you're that you're verifying. The credential, right? Sure. I mean, yeah. If if the if the Merkle tree gets Pretty large. In, in the well, the oh, cost. It's, it's oh, it's because yeah, no, no, no. So, sorry, the cost is constant. Back. Yeah, um, cost is cost is uh, cost is constant because they because the Merkle proofs are private inputs. Sorry about that. Yes, sorry, got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Public input is doesn't 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 change. It's just a root hash. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Maybe the, maybe the issuance would matter, but yeah, you're right. The constant, the checking is constant. Yeah, because the private. Yeah. The, 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 you just because use the root. Proof. Yeah, because the public input is just the the the, the root hash of the of the of the Merkle tree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. No, 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 no. Nothing to be sorry about. This is this is the point, right, of these conversations. Um. Well, Otto, let's move to the challenge. So, um, the important thing, right? Um, what we are looking for is um to build an application that that uses the ident tree. Com, uh, which is a, a DID com style protocol, and um, as it is mentioned here, using an NFC or Bluetooth will have an additional score. And when we say additional score, we mean a lot of additional score, right? Um, Sorry, can I can, yeah. can I ask one one more stupid question? No, um, no, I, I, I mean, there's no stupid so, question. Just go. <laughs> okay, so maybe maybe a a, um, a redundant question. So. Um, you need for for VC verification. You need a VP. So is that is is the is the proof actually the proof of the of of the VP and the VC, or or just the VC, the verifiable presentation? Yeah, I, I can jump in. Um, what we are doing actually is uh, we are generating zero knowledge proof from the credential itself. So we are not sharing mm -hmm. verifiable presentation so we are generating very uh, we are generating zero knowledge proof from the uh, credential itself with the uh, right. um, proofs and so on so yeah kind of we can call this a verifiable presentation in a way but we are um, no. using a different format to present it uh, to to the application we are packaging it into a jwz as we call it uh, it's a uh, JWT compatible um, data structure, but instead of a signature, yeah. uh, we have a zero knowledge proof attached to to it to kind of prove that um, data inside this container is uh, coming from this uh, specific identity. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, so the, the the reason why I'm asking this is 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 because the the credential subject is not necessarily the credential holder. That presents the credential for to the to the verifier. Yeah. So yeah, uh, credential subject uh, could be different. We have a feature in the protocol that is called uh, profile. So um, each um, identity can have many identifiers, uh, as we call it uh, profiles. We have one that is the genesis one, that is main one and others that are derived from it. And uh, there is no possibility for um, verifiers or issuers to uh, link them uh, between them. And the user can use any of the identifiers, can, can use just one-time identifiers, but still he is able to prove that he has credentials that they, um, were issued to one of his profiles. Right, but if the if the yeah, the, I I understand the concept of peer dits and you know one time dits. Um, that um, my question was if if the holder of the credential is not the credential subject, um, and presents it on behalf of the of the the holder, so it's it's a valid identity, right? So it's like it's like you pre I present my passport, my child's passport on behalf of the child. I want to do that in under under ah, okay under 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 zero knowledge so it's like it's like i i need to there there needs to be in the did document 
there needs to be, um, uh, um, if it's a valid holder, right? That holder should be in the, um, should be should be part of the um, the did of the of the of the presenter of the credential should be listed um, uh, um, uh, as the um, as a key agreement in the assertion mm -hmm. section with the DID of the of the um, of the holder, right? So mm -hmm. so what you need in order to do that properly is is you need to add to that to the not only the, the verification of of the VC but yeah. you need you need to have a proof that the current did document, right? That the that the that the um, that the that the holder is actually part of the did document, and that the key is is um, is in the assertion section. So you have multiple Merkle proofs that you need to add to the to the to the proof besides the signature verification for mm -hmm. that for that key. Then you have a verifiable presentation. That allows you to to verify that the holder actually is is allowed to present that 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 VC. Just a just a comment. Yeah, we, we don't have uh, this uh, feature support yet, um, but it's possible to add multiple keys to to the um, mm -hmm. identity. So it's possible to um, uh, give the keys to to parents uh, from from this identity, and then um act on behalf but it will not be visible who is actually acting it will be right, from right. the outside it will be no, the I'm, same idea. i'm just saying it's it's a little tricky because you need to link to the dead document in order to be able to 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 have a verification of the of the of the root so you need not only the vc but you need also the reference to the dead document of the of the of the um of the holder and yeah, yeah. To properly, sorry, properly sorry to interrupt maybe this sorry. is better for like for 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 later let's sorry let's later continue. you guys go yeah. sorry about that no, no 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 it's it's a valid conversation let's just finish with uh with the presentation as is just to explain everything and then we can talk uh on this and any other stuff that somebody wants to talk about so going back to the challenge right um what we want is um uh, you guys to build a, an application that that uses the ident com right the, the protocol and uh, as I mentioned, if it's done over NFC or Bluetooth, it will have a, a huge additional score, right? The use case uh, could be like different stuff. One of the, this is um, shown here, presenting a driver's license, right? Or you want to enter a club or you want to buy uh, something that you need to be of certain age and um, and you do it without exposing the the, the data, right? Uh, you can use the our app as mentioned. Uh, you can use the SDKs, so you can create your own right wallet, or you can un use any of the wallets uh, that already have integrated Polygon ID. So, no, we don't want you to build a wallet, right? Then, um, as Identricom is um, is agnostic, right, to the to the transport means. This is why we are doing like extra points for somebody that implements it in with Bluetooth or, or NFC. And we want to stress out, right, that, that we are we would like you to focus on the verification side, right? So for the issuers, as we mentioned, there is an issuer node. Uh, you can use the JS SDK. There is a schema builder for you to build schemas. There are already schemas available in the marketplace that you can use. So this is, let's say, covered, right? On the wallet side, on the user side, this is also, let's say, covered because you can use one of the existing apps or the SDK. And on the verification side, as we said, there are libraries, and this is where we want to see um, where we want to see um, something done, right? Um, a bit more details on the uh, on the mentioned NFC or Bluetooth challenge. So as I said, the for the issuance, it's optional, not required. Um, for the presentation, for the verification side, it's required, right? The verification phase must use NFC or Bluetooth. This is where we want to uh, to, to see stuff happening. Um, for the wallets I already mentioned, and the base is the, the repo that is written in Go, but there is also uh, a JS version in the JS SDK. iOS, Android, 
uh, totally uh, agnostic. You can use both. You can use one of these. So it, it doesn't matter. So the most important thing is Identricom, focus on verification via NFC or, or Bluetooth. Perfect. And I think that's it, right, Toto? Uh, yes, I think that's it. And um, yes, uh, we're we're here. If you guys have questions, uh, I will be also checking the the Discord, and I'll be sharing this presentation there as well. And um, yes, since we have a first question from an application point of view, option verifications are planned to be used for a more classic server hosted by verifier. While the on-chain verification is expected to be used, yes, by a full Web3 application where the service is expected. Yes, exactly. Um, I, where the service is expected to be for with smart contracts and accesses, but uh, I mean, yes, exactly. Right. So you, yeah, you can use either one. If you're going to use the on-chain uh, verification, it would be like a Web3 application exactly that it uses the smart contract to kind of check that the person has the correct data. Um, and the other one is like a more classic Web2 example um, where you would yeah. off-chain verify them. In, ter in terms of in terms of like um you know how we are going to to grade that um we very love our on-chain <laughs> verification side. So I mean um maybe um a bit of additional points, right? For using directly the smart contract verification. Uh, okay, Kim, let's go to the next one. To clarify, there's no existing Polygon ID wallet that features NFC Bluetooth. So we will have to build our own wallet. Well, not, let's say not on the wallet side, right? Um, you would need to explore, right? So there's the, um, there are options that you can use directly from 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 the wallet from the native side, but yes, I mean in terms of like how verification happens, we want to see this. We are we are NFC uh, or Bluetooth. Uh, can it work offline? Yes. Um, the only thing that that you need to somehow be some sort of online is to check the revocation status, right? So to see if the credentials has been revoked, right? Or or or, or the the if it exists yet. But um let's say it can be a secondary thing. So we need to focus on, on the verification. Part of the verification indeed includes verifying if the credential hasn't been revoked in the meantime, right? Since it has been issued and now that you are verifying uh, the proof based on that um, verifiable credential, it may happen that the credential has been revoked by the issuer. Yes, correct. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll just re-emphasize on the, on the other part about the application. I mean, the, the source code, we do have an example source code that uh, does um, in like a sample, I think, browser extension that we released. And uh, some other code. I don't think the app itself we released as open source, but you know, with what you have from the Polygon ID Flutter SDK, I think you should be able to build your own wallet app that supports that. Um, that there's site. also, I mean, if if there are any Android lovers, uh, there's also an an Android extension on top of Flutter, a bit of Frankenstein code, but it's something that works, and you can use that if you are more used to 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 using this. And if we decide in the meantime to open the repo of the app itself, uh, you will you will get notified. Are identricom and on-chain verification features mutually exclusive, or do you want to see me? They are not mutually exclusive, so they are actually compatible. Yeah, I mean, I I guess I mean this is just like. What use case would you have that it uses an NFC and then at the same time is doing some on-chain stuff? I don't have a great example of that, but I imagine there could be some if you want to do that. Uh, you know, challenge yourself to something like that. I think there could be, if, there there could could be, be. right? There could be. Like there's something that you want to keep 
um, let's say the proof that something happened in the blockchain, but that not necessarily needs to happen instantly on chain, right? That doesn't need to happen on the network. So it's something refugee camp, right? Think about that. Could it be, is yeah. Difficult. yeah. This, this is it why is. It's, it's a yeah. challenge, right? <laughs> Proof well, of physical address, yeah. Like you scan NFC tag, and uh, but you submit this on chain. Yeah. For example. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, uh, like we said, you know, don't worry so much about the credential issuance. Feel free to leverage any of the free credentials that we have here from from the providers. You can leverage any of those. The main thing is making sure that in the presentation flow we can showcase that being done with Bluetooth or NFC. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay, well, let's see any other questions? I guess um, we'll be seeing more questions in the Discord. We also have a Polygon ID Discord that I also linked in the in the in the Diff Discord, so I'll mention that again as well, along with the presentation notes. And yeah, thank you guys so much for for your attention today. And um, yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you so much for your presentation. I'm putting the Polygon ID um, Discord in the chat. Um, so this is, sorry, this is the channel in the Diff Hackathon uh, Discord server. So you can go and ask questions. And I'm going to, I'm going to make this recording, um, let me turn my video. I'm going to make this recording available on YouTube. So it should be up later today if anyone wants to go back and review it. But otherwise we can continue the discussion in Discord. Um, and I know um, there were a couple questions that already came up in the Discord as well. So um that you guys might, might want to take a look at. So, but thank you once again for joining us today and taking the time to review the challenge and to review, give just an overview of Polygon ID. All right, so um, so we will see. You. So we will see everyone around the community. We'll see you around Discord and in the coming days and also um, look out for office hours as well. Um, for the diff prize challenge that we're going to put up for next week. Um, so thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.